Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Trader Summit and I have J Mr. Jim Welsh from Macrotites. He's with us a little bit early. We had uh, some scheduling conflicts, yeah. but it's great that you fit us in, Jim, to your to, to our schedule. I'm glad we could do yes. it. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing great. It's it's a day early, uh, so I'm, I'm excited. I think a lot of viewers yeah. are going to be excited to have uh, this information from you uh, a day earlier than normal. Um, but as you can see, Stocks haven't really subsided. S and P is yep. firmly above five thousand. We had a lot of data already up to this point. I know we're waiting on producer prices, but what? What immediately? What's your takeaway with this week's CPI? Like uh, off the cuff? Yeah. Uh, well, I think the initial reaction was overdone because uh, if you do look at the shelter component, which contributed, I think, about sixty percent of the increase. It doesn't jive with what we know is happening in the real world in terms of the increase in rents flattening out. Um, it, it, you know, home prices have been ticking higher the last six months, but overall, we know that the shelter component is going to decline in coming months, and so that uptick, um, you know, overstated it. At the same time, I think, and as we've talked, I think Wall Street has overemphasized inflation at this point in time uh so that the declines were like oh my god now the fed can ease to the point you know of six or seven cuts even though the fed has said we're down with three cuts uh and as we've talked i think the fed is looking out the next two three years not the next six months they're looking at things like hey gdp the economy continues to chug along at around two and a half percent comfortably above its long-term non-inflationary growth rate of 1.8. Unemployment is hovering just above 50-year lows. They're looking at wanting to see some weakness, Blake, in the overall economy. They will, They also want to say an uptick in uh, the unemployment rate would also be helpful. And I think once that stuff starts happening, the fact that inflation has come down, is likely to continue to come down, will give them the green light to start cutting. We're just not there yet. And they're not going to cut six times uh, this year. And that's been my view for, you know, for quite a while, um, it, because of where the economy is right now. So to me, there was an overreaction to the CPI. But again, I think the bigger picture is Wall Street doesn't seem to grasp um, the other components in terms of overall economic growth, and the unemployment rate being near a 50 year low, that but the fed can't say that they're not going to say you know we really need this economy to slow for us to be confident that inflation is going to stay down oh no by the way we need the, the unemployment rate to tick above four percent oh yeah by the way it's an election year let's go campaign on that right. so to me wall street has continued continue to not recognize that those are economic factors that i think uh, the patient hawks are focused on you know, and what we've seen, interestingly enough, even the, the doves, you know, have kind of been like, okay, we can wait a little while. Why? Well, because the economy continues to act okay. So, I, again, I think once we see definitive signs things are slowing, the Fed will cut rates. I still don't think they're going to cut anywhere near as aggressively as Wall Street has been saying, um, unless things slow more than expected. Well, the so the first chart that you brought up is um, regarding rate cuts. So should we yeah. show show yeah. The yeah, it fits what right you're, in. you're thinking here? Okay, yeah. let's, let's do that. So, you know, again, this goes to a secondary point that people on Wall Street constantly talk about, well, the Fed Fund Futures is telling me such and such. And, you know, what I've discussed repeatedly over years is this kind of idea that the markets tell us – is right some of the time, but it's also right uh, wrong a lot of the time. And so what we can see is in January, uh, you know, looking for six to seven rate cuts. This is after the Fed has told us that uh, we're comfortable with three. And now it's, you know, it's the, the percentages or the amount of decline has gone from 170 basis points of cuts, which is uh, almost seven cuts. And now we're down to about three and a half cuts and the Fed is at three, basically 75 basis points of cut. Then in May, what we saw is, you know, in January and just about a week ago, 
you know, it was pushing 100% probability. Everybody said, okay, if it's not happening in March, it will definitely happen in, in May. And so I think, yes, there was an overreaction to the CPI report, but also it's making people realize, okay, they don't need to be as aggressive as we thought they would be and hoped they would be. And so to me, looking at the Fed funds futures is worthless. Most of the time, it's worthless. And well, yet, so many people point to it as being a guidepost. Okay, but but you know what I, I find most fascinating is that we have had the market adjust its expectations, but it's had zero, zero impact on equity market prices at this point. Right. And I think one of the reasons is we've seen this over the last few months as we've gotten economic data points showing the economy continues to be doing OK. Um, that's perfect for if you want to be a, a Super Bowl. Oh, we're going to get the economy's doing just fine and we're going to get all these cuts. And so I think uh, the litmus test is going to be is how does Wall Street respond Um if and when we see more definitive signs of slowing. I also think, Blake, there's the potential that um, near-term signs of strength in the economy will be treated less positively. In other words, over the last two, three months, positive news on the economy was treated as good news. The CPI coming in the way, oh, okay, maybe the economy is not as weak as we need it to see. So. Um, I, I, to me, th that's the way I take it from. Well, um, so, that. I mean, right now, bad is good and good is good. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's all it good. It is. I mean, that's, well, again, what, no, I would say good is good has been running with it because they had both good economic news and the Fed cutting aggressively. As I've said many times, it doesn't get much more bullish than that. That's been the narrative. What's going to cause it to change? And slowly but surely, we've obviously seen expectations of Fed rate cuts dialed back. But they're still leaning on, yeah, we may not get as many and as soon, but we still have the economy in good shape. And that's why, to me, that will be the test. If and when we start seeing more signs that the fact that the economy is slowing, that challenges that part of the narrative. And that's the part of the narrative that I think, uh, and you know, the old buy the dip mentality works until it stops working. And so to me, it's no surprise that we saw a decline and people wanted to jump right back into it because it's like a gift. Oh my God, the S&P's down one and a half percent. My prayers have been answered. So. Well, okay. So the, the, the first chart that you brought happens to be an intraday S&P chart, which I'm I'm fascinated that you're doing this, maybe because we're filming on a Thursday versus a Friday. But what do we have <laughs> no. here, Jim? Like, uh, well, there's there's time, you know, most of the time we look at daily charts. Yeah. But sometimes you got to kind of go under the surface and most people don't. Um, and so to me, when I look at this, it looks like from that high we saw at 5,048, a clear one, two, three, four, five to the low at 49.20. That five wave down then said, we're going to get a bounce. And so far, it looks like an A, B, and we're in wave five of what I think is wave C. And wave A rallied, what, 72 points? Uh, I think that's correct. You add 72 points to 49.56, and you get 50.28. And I think we got within a point or two of that so far this morning. So I'm just looking at this pattern and saying, okay, this implies that we're going to see the five down, uh, that sooner or later, the S&P will go below 49.20. It may actually push above 5,048 first. It's possible. But ultimately, that five down says to me, we're going to see uh, the S&P below 49.20. And, you know, again, I, I well, Elliott Wave doesn't predict things and so forth. And, you know, here's my assessment on Elliott Wave, which is what this pattern analysis is is one third of the time it's really pretty helpful. One third of the time you have two or three choices and one third of the time it's worthless. But, you know, his, what I have found is, um, you know, over the last handful of months, 
after the bond market declined in five ways into last October, it was like, we're going to see a huge rally. Well, TLT went from 82.50 to 100 in two months. Uh, we had five down in the dollar. Dollar's going to rally. And it, so there's times when this stuff works uh, really, really pretty well. And the other thing I'm going to add into it, and I can't remember, I almost, I just didn't have time to put this together, but the S&P topped in January of 2018 and then dropped about 11% in two weeks. Uh, it topped in February of 2020. And we know what happened then. In 2022, it stopped in January. And we obviously had a big decline. So in other words, there's been this two-year cycle going back a handful of years. Actually, there was a low in 2016 uh, in January. Um, so my point being is here we are at new highs. Sentiment is wildly bullish. And that cycle is implying that there's a high probability that there's going to be a high um, in January or February. And we just saw a pretty good reversal. So to me, that's the major, the bigger picture and why I think caution is warranted at this point. And then, you know, a number of weeks ago, we discussed the 17 year cycle, which suggests, okay, there's a high probability. There's a high coming in 2024. Remember 1939, 56, 73, 90, 2007. Yeah. So when you start layering all this stuff together, I just feel like, okay, we need to take every indication of a market high a little bit more seriously because of the two-year cycle, the 17-year cycle. And, um, you know, I I just think that that, to me, well, where I'm coming from is um, I want to pay attention. That's all. Yeah. All you right. Know? And, well, this, this uh, the next S&P chart is a little bit broader view. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, it goes back to, you know, the low uh, we saw in January and one, two, three, four, five up to the high last uh, week, you know, at 5,048. Yep. And it's just a bigger picture where, okay, again, you had five down, I think to 49.20, we're getting this ABC bounce. And it implies again, that we will sooner or later see a decline below 49.20. If and when that happens, it's either going to be uh, A, B, C, and then we're off to the races again to higher highs. And I think there's a real uh, possibility that that is how it's going to play out. At the same time, given my prior comments, it's also possible you get a one, two, get down below 49.20, get a kind of a mediocre bounce, and then have wave five down. And that then would, to me, say, okay, the high is in, but there's no way to know that. To me, I have confidence in, in the I outlook that a decline below 49.20 is coming. The nature of that decline and then what happens subsequently will tell us an awful lot about the balance of this year. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, that's at a time. One, you know. one step, that's it. And right, you have to watch price action as a trader, watch price action and then make yeah. your decisions based on the information that was just given Showing to you. Well, yeah. Okay. So the next chart you brought is the dollar. Um, yeah. what, what, what about well, the dollar yeah. here? Last week when we talked, it was like, you know what? I just feels and looks like there needs to be one more push higher above that 104.60 high. And we got it obviously on the CPI report. So to me, it's kind of like, okay, there's a higher probability that the dollars rally from that 100.62 is done. And we're going to see uh, the dollar pull back. You need, I think, a close below 103.80 to really ramp up the probabilities of that. So, um, uh, again, I, I think the economy is going to slow more than people realize. If and when that happens, the dollar is going to be vulnerable. And that's why I think sometime this year, the dollar will trade below 100 certainly below the 100.62 low. So, I mean, but if you look uh, 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 in the horizon, I mean, yes, we got producer prices tomorrow, but what what is the data that could really be that catalyst to start seeing some, you know, strong yeah. US dollar weakness? I mean, next week we might have some PMIs perhaps. Um, you I, know. I think you need the, the employment numbers, uh, Blake, 
because that's the last shoe to drop yeah. before you really become more weak in the economy. Um, so sometime in the next month or two, a job report or all of a sudden it's sub 100,000, sub 150,000 maybe. Um, there was a lot of funny stuff in the last employment report that I think probably made it look stronger than it actually was. At the same time, under the surface, we saw a big decline in hours work. Yeah. Well, what does that mean to the average worker? If I'm working fewer hours, what's happening in my paycheck? Right. right. So the unemployment ha rate hasn't changed. Maybe it's you know still three point seven, but there's been a you know a decline in hours worked, and that's typically now there, there was weather in mid January, which also I think potentially impacted the retail sales number. Remember, I think two thirds of the country for about a week was below freezing. That makes a difference, you know, uh, yeah. in terms of how people behave and all the rest of that. But I think to answer your question, you need to see the employment numbers start to show more weakness. Um, and, you know, so far, uh, you know, the unemployment claims aren't really signaling much. The one thing, and I can't remember if we looked at this, maybe I'll try to remember next time, warn notices. In other words, employers have to give a, a warning that, hey, we're going to Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. yeah. 60 days in advance. Well, the last two months, there's been a pretty big increase. So what that implies is as we go out 60 days from now, we're going to see that start to hit the real world in terms of, yeah, we gave you a warning and now we're laying you off. And, you know, for high income workers uh, who get severance packages, the impact from getting laid off is obviously delayed for more day-to-day -day hourly workers, when they start to get laid off, then obviously the impact on the economy is much more significant and more quickly. So again, the, the labor department, uh, labor uh, market is, I think, the key in terms of uh, convincing people that maybe things are slowing more than they expected. All right. Well, um, let's, uh, let's go to gold because gold has dropped more than I think a lot of people have expected. Uh, but you were expecting a little bit of a pullback and we got it. Well, here's another case. The decline uh, from that 2064, if you look like at a 30 minute chart, it was five down. So it's kind of like, okay, is the next declining wave beginning to develop? And, um, you know, there was the potential for a triangle, which I had recovered last week, A, B, C, D, E, but it had to stay above 2002 for that pattern to be viable. My bias was I thought it was going to go down. And the 1974 is important. You take that out. The next stop, obviously, is 1933. Um, so I just think the odds, the way gold has been acting, and I think you made it kind of like it's trading kind of heavy last week and we saw that play out so until proven otherwise i think one has to be defensive on gold again bigger picture i'm looking for an entry because i think subsequently we're going to see gold rally to 2300 or more it's just that you might get a detour meaningful detour down to 1812 before that happens yeah. And that, so that, the, the yeah. probabilities have, I think, gradually shifted. You know, in uh, late November, we talked about that big ABC and that unbelievable reversal that gold experienced. It was like, whoa, wait a second. That implies that the decline to 1812 was wave A of wave two. A three waves up was uh, B of two. And now we're working our way in wave C of uh, two which has the potential of taking gold all the way down to 1812. And okay. so as things have unfolded, Blake, to me, that has shifted and increased the probabilities that that is becoming more likely. Sure. Until proven otherwise. Okay. Well, we, we had a big move this year, this year, I'm sorry, this week. <laughs> I said this yeah. year. We had a big move. Feels like it sometimes. Uh, we had a big yeah. move in yields. Uh, so what? Uh, what? What are? How are you reading well, the thirty year here? Well, when we talked last Friday, you know, my take was I think yields are headed higher, and I still think the fact that we got above that four forty two on the thirty year and the ten year did the same thing. It's equivalent high from a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, it increases that okay. This thing might be done. In other words, A B. 
we've satisfied the minimum requirement for an ABC. I think the odds are it's going to push higher first before uh, the, the pattern is complete. So that's why I have wave C would equal wave A in its length at 456 on the yield. So not a heck of a lot higher, but it looks like that is uh, a realistic potential. Now, once this is over, uh, this tick up in yields, I think that, you know, the 30 years going below 394, I think it's close to maybe 350. The 10 year, I think gets down to 340, 325. So from a bigger picture, you know, um, the low that we saw last October and the rally, uh, you can see five waves down. That to me implies that the major trend in the near term for treasury bonds is for higher prices, lower yields. We were going to have, though, in an, an intermission where yields were going to tick up. Why? Because we had five down, time for a retracement. And then I think there's another five wave decline in yields coming. And that's why I think TLT has the potential of getting up to 105, 109, and potentially 119 if the economy does in fact slow more than people are expecting. Um, you know, I think yields can obviously will drop more as pension funds and insurance companies decide, hey, we better buy, buy these and lock in these yields. Yeah. That, so that, that the next handful sense. of months, I think, are going to be potentially really pretty crazy. The, the bond market could be, you know, the de facto um, risk off, uh, uh, you know, trade, if you will. Right. Right. So, yeah. So, again, like I said, the two year cycle, the 17 year cycle to me are in the, the, the wild enthusiasm. I mean, you can't help but look at NVIDIA's chart and say that's a parabolic. Now, that means doesn't mean it can't go to 900 or some, you know, another higher number. But parabolics always end badly. Always. So in Monday's weekly tech review, I just I showed the chart of NVIDIA and I said, hey, take a look at the South Sea bubble. <laughs> from 1720 or if you can find a chart of rca in oh, the yeah. 1980s okay or the the best one i've seen yet is smci over the last month it's right. it's nuts i mean but Silly. but you're right. right these are these are explosive moves and they never end well they just right end. japan in the 1980s it peaked in 1989 well here we are how many years later and it finally took out that peak in the last few months yeah so you know, this is human nature is embedded in things when you start seeing extremes. And, uh, you know, at the end of a move, and again, I uh, weeks ago, I showed, okay, in terms of the bigger picture on the S&P, can it get to 52.19? You know, because we had a rally from October of 2022 to July. It was 1,100 points. You add 1,100 points to the low we saw this past October at 4,100. Voila, you had 5,200. My belief has been we were likely to see a 3 to 7% pullback before we get that move up to 5,200. Um, but, you know, could it happen in the next two, three weeks? Yeah, there's a man of quality going on in the market. To me, at least it feels that way. So that has to be respected. Um, but, you know, and it's also possible I'm putting more emphasis on that five wave decline on the S&P than it's really warranted, given the psychology, you know, that right. kind of running possible. Well, so, Jim, I tell you, it's it's nice to have you a day early. Um, I know this won't be our norm, but I but I really appreciate you uh, taking your time, taking the time. Yeah. Um, you know, to to sit down with the traders here at Trader Summit. Um, you know, if you like what Jim does, make sure you give him a thumbs up. Jump in the comments down below if you you feel that those interest rate expectation shifts have uh, should be respected more by the markets, but yeah. it haven't, hasn't been yet. So if you got a different viewpoint, challenge me. Yeah, I, I mean, I try to keep an open mind. That to me is one of the hallmarks of anyone who's been around markets for a while. Is you can't marry a narrative. Yeah, because sooner or later the narrative changes, and if you're married to it. It's a, you know, divorces are not fun. Look, it's a great point, Jim. A lot of, <laughs> lot of wisdom there. All right, Jim, <laughs> thank you for spending your time with us. Make sure you email Jim at Jim Welsh macro at Gmail. Just to get, get the most recent macro tides uh, <laughs> from him. Make sure you tell him you're from Trader Summit. So Jim, thank you yes. so much for uh, being with us and we'll catch you next week.
Always a pleasure. Have a great long weekend for all, everyone in the United States. Hey traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notifications so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.